Good morning, everybody. Let's just take a little bit of time to go over this test review. I know that you were, uh, had access to the questions and the answers, but I want to just explain what's happening here in case you missed it. Uh, these first couple are actually are kind of the easiest things to do. We can see that when you're going to translate or you're going to move this parent function around, the x minus 4 comes from the x equals 4. You're always doing minus whatever the x value is on these. And then the other part comes directly from the y. So if this is a minus 1, you just tack a minus 1 on the end. If it's a minus 7, you tack a minus 7. If it had been a plus 7, you would tacked on a plus 7. So that's how those work. Okay, uh, figuring out whether you've got a direct inverse or neither. Most of you did great on this last time, but if you're watching this part, it means you need a little help. To check to see if it's a direct variation, you check what you get by dividing y divided by x, y divided by x. I think some of you are doing x divided by y, but check y divided by x. If they don't come out to be exact, it's not a direct variation. Okay, this one is a direct variation because 6 divided by 2, 9 divided by 3, 4 divided by 12, they're all the same number, and knowing that they're same, the same number tells you that the constant of variation is k equals 3. Uh, on your quiz, I had noticed that some of you were giving the full-out equation, but if it just asks for the constant of variation, you're just looking for that one number. Then in order to check for inverse variations, you multiply, all right, and see if you get the same number. This one you don't. so it's not inverse. 2 times 6, 3 times, not the same number. This one, however, when you multiply all those numbers together, you get the same answer, so therefore it is an inverse variation, with the constant being that number that you got all those times. This one also inverse, because when you multiply these numbers together, you always get the same number over and over and over again. All right, dividing does not give you the same number, so it's not a direct variation, it's an inverse variation. If you're given a problem where y varies inversely with x, it means that the x times the y has to give you the same value over and over again. So that's why you can find the constant simply by multiplying the two numbers that go together, and that gives you your constant of variation. Your equation, though, for an inverse variation is y equals k over x. So it's y equals that number over x. That's your equation. Here is your equation, y equals that number that you got over x. Then when you need to find y when x equals 4, you just plug in the, three for your, uh, the 4 for your x and simplify and get your answer 3 and your answer 18 on that. Okay, moving on here. Somebody had asked a question about asymptotes. I may have inadvertently directed you to the next asymptote less section because there's two sections on asymptotes. So let's clear this up for you. Um, if you need to sketch the asymptotes and graphs. Now, I'm not having you submit your graphs. I'm going to do this multiple choice style again. This tells you that the whole graph moves to the right 3, and this one tells you that it moves down 4. So the asymptotes, when it's in this form, are simply found by reversing that process that you did at the very beginning. This one is left 2 and down 1. If this was a plus 1, the whole thing would be shifted up 1 instead of down 1. So opposite here, this is positive 3, and down 4, those are your asymptotes. This one is negative 2, and down 1, those are your asymptotes. And then it approaches those asymptotes, and the graph got sketched in. It's an inverse, a standard inverse function. No squares, nothing like that, so the general shape looks like this. Then there was these type of problems where you have to find all of the information. It always starts with factoring, so you need to factor the numerator and the denominator, then pull all this information out of what you got. 
So here's our factored form right here. Our x-intercepts come directly from the numerator because they're what gives you a y of being 0. So y being 0 means that x plus 6 has to be 0, negative 6, or x minus 3 has to be 0, which gives you the 3. The y-intercept comes from what happens when x is 0. So if you plug in 0 squared plus 3 times 0, these two parts don't even count. 0 squared minus 9 times 0, these two parts don't even count. And you're left with negative 18 over 14, which can be reduced. So that's where the y-intercept of negative 9 sevenths comes from. The domain, the points of discontinuity, and the vertical asymptotes all come from the denominator. So you look at the factored form of the denominator. The domain is everything except those two values that give you zeros here. The points of discontinuity are where x equals those two values. Yes, I do need you to put the x equals into those parts. And the vertical asymptotes, x equals 7 would be the, the line that is where x equals 7, and x equals 2 would be the line where x equals 2. Those are your vertical asymptotes. The horizontal asymptotes, we look at these exponents, and since they're equal, you have to take the coefficients of these terms, which in this case happens to be 1, and take 1 over 1, and that gives you your horizontal asymptote of 1. It's a little bit different than the other asymptote problems because we've got, we no longer just have a simple inverse variation. We've got more to it. So you do have to look at these uh, coefficients to be able to figure out your horizontal asymptote. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, once again, when you're simplifying, factoring is your best friend. You need to factor things first. Okay, factoring comes first. Then look for things that match. The x plus 6's have to cancel out, which leaves you with x minus 3, x plus 2. It does say state any restrictions, values that it's not allowed to be. You can't get a 0 in the denominator, so negative 2 will give you a denominator of 0 here, and negative 6 gives you a denominator of 0 here. So as you go through, just make your first instinct that you're going to factor. Same thing when you're multiplying. Your first instinct should be to factor. Also, make sure that you treat these, since there are no common factors, no GCF, and there's nothing that you can factor out, these are their own groups. So you'll want to put them in parentheses. They're really just that as a factor times 1. This one is a difference of two squares. You should always be familiar with that. That'll help you into your future. So x plus 4, x minus 4. This one has a GCF of 2, so you would factor out the 2 and get 2 times x minus 7. Then look for the ones that are the same. The x plus 4s are the same. The x minus 7s are the same. It leaves you with this. This is your answer. And these are your restrictions. X can't be negative 4, it would give you a 0 here. X can't be positive 4, it would give you a 0 here. And X can't be 7 because that would give you a 0 here. All right. When you deal with division, remember division is multiply times the reciprocal. So there's two things in play here. First of all, you've got to do the reciprocal of this one, and then you go factoring crazy and you factor everything. So here's the reciprocal of this one. Then factoring gives you these values. See how it's surrounded by parentheses because it's its own thing. Factor out this right here, common factor of 2. Then you begin to look for the things that cancel out. You're left with x minus 1 times x plus 5 over 2. The restrictions are anything that was a denominator anywhere. So it can't be negative 3 because of here. It can't be negative 6 because of here. What about this negative 5? Wait a minute, that doesn't appear to be a denominator, but 
It really is because it was a part of the den this denominator. Okay, even though it got flipped over, it was part of a denominator to start with and you can't have a zero anywhere. So this is your last and final restriction on this one. Okay. Uh, on this test, you're not going to be having to email me anything. It's all going to be through those Google Forms. So I, I have to make sure that you can have a good way to submit them. So I'll make sure of that. Okay. All right. When you're adding, you need to have common denominators. These are not common denominators. So you have to find something to multiply both of them by to make sure you have a common denominator x plus 3 is a whole unit. It needs an x plus 4, so this one will be multiplied by x plus 4 over x plus 4. x plus 4 is an entire unit. It doesn't have an x plus 3, so this one gets multiplied by x plus 3 over x plus 3. Now once you have that, you need to go ahead and multiply them out. Don't forget when you're distributing, be careful if you've got negatives not to make a mistake with the signs. Then put your like terms all together. This would be 9 minus 1 would be 1. I mean 9 minus 8 would be 1. 20 minus 24 is negative 4. And you've got this x squared hanging out here. x plus 3, x plus 4. Well, that's just the denominator and there's nothing that can be done with that. If we tried to factor this out, there's nothing, it, there's no factoring available for this, so nothing will cancel out. X can't be negative 3, denominator. X can't be negative 4, denominator. And that's it. Then we have to solve. You have to be able to solve one. Okay. So solving, you need to get rid of the denominator, figure out what you can multiply across to get rid of your fractions. You need to be able to cancel out 2x, so you know you're going to at least be multiplying by 2x. That would take care of this 2 as well. And you'd need another x, so you're going to multiply by 2x squared. Because when you distribute it, okay, so that it goes to all the pieces, the x squared cancels here, the 2's cancel here, and 2x cancels here, and you're left with that. Bring everything to one side by adding the x squared and subtracting the 5x. Well, why not bring it to the left? Because then you'll have a negative to deal with, and it just makes it easier to bring it to whatever side is going to make your squared term positive. Then factor, figure out what values you get and then just do a quick little check to make sure it doesn't mess up a denominator and you're done. So that's it. I've been over it. If you have anything that you need to ask me, uh, we've got that 945 Zoom meeting, but if it happens to be after 945 and you need to talk to me, shoot me an email and we'll see if we can maybe get another session going later in the afternoon if that's what you need. Um, like uh, just maybe right after lunch or so. Okay. All right. That's it. Uh, God bless you and have a great day.